foundation. It's time to put a base back up under it. It's time to take the Bible and slide it as the base right back up under this nation again. And let it sit prophetically right back down where it belongs. In the scripture that it was erected out of. Let it be pulled back up under it with that base. Make that base sound, Tommy. Come on. Come on. However you hear, I don't care. Come on, let's go. In the wind. In the wind. Let there be a base under this nation. Let there be a base under this nation. In the wind. this nation is being held in high esteem again for godless men and women urged on by the devil himself sought to overthrow a nation thought to overthrow the greatest nation it and Israel are the greatest nations that have ever been and he thought to overthrow it because he thought for sure if he could take this one down then he would take down everything else with ease but he never counted on he never counted on the remnant he never counted on us prophesy prophesy into the wind never counted on it oh prophesy prophesy into the wind He never counted on us again To begin again In the wind Come on
was in the wind Oh, the battle is over For righteousness has prevailed The battle is over The defeat of the kingdom of hell
Europe, no, blowing into Europe to uncover things there. Beware, beware, royal family, the wind is there. Beware, oh, ye prime ministers around the earth, the wind has begun to blow.
of that horn was to raise bodies up out of the earth. You say raise them back to life? In a way, it's to reveal those that were killed and done it and corrupt. For now secrets will be unveiled. People will see just exactly what you've done. For the wind is blowing again. Uncovering things under the sun. Again. Oh, politician run. From one side of the earth to the other. You've called peoples to kill their brothers. Politician, run, run, run. time in the wind, a different time in the wind. Did you hear anything in the wind when you were playing? Any words? We, we have to be, whatever we hear, that's what the stage is for. The 11th hour is to hear in the wind. We want to hear in the prophetic time, and we are certainly in a prophetic time. If you don't think we're in a prophetic time, then you don't even, you've never seen prophetic. <laughs> this, is, this is it. And people all over the world are watching now. And uh, people all over the world have their eyes turned toward God. Have y'all noticed that? Everybody's looking at God. They're looking at the Bible. They, call, they say providence. They say divine interventions. They say, but they're all talking about it from the, the, the highest to the least. As far as ranking political spectrums and communities and things. <clears throat> this is a prophetic time. But I'm going to tell you something. We have to listen. And we have to not be afraid to listen. We have to not be afraid to hear things we haven't heard. 
There's not another time like this one. I don't know that anyone's ever seen a time like this unless it was the prophets. And well, I say except the prophets in the old days. They saw it coming. They just never walked into it in this time unless some traveled in the future, and that's very possible. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to be right back in a few minutes. We're going to find out what God's going to say today in the wind. Two count. in this nation and that is for the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob and we call every bird of prey that would attack Israel to fall from the sky fall down into a place and we call we call for the birds of prey to explode in their caves and explode in the places where they are manufacturing birds of prey for guidance systems to fail for guidance systems to fail. And Lord God, number the troops and number the defense of Israel. So many more than they are. Number them, Lord, and let their enemies hear thousands more. Let their enemies hear the angelic host and the army that's actually marching with them to stand with them. And Lord God, I ask you to show the naysayers, Lord God, in this, in this prophetic time that there are more with us and more with Israel than there are with their enemies. We speak Babel, Babel over the enemies of Israel. Babel, confusion in their communications. Russia, back up. Russia, you didn't want this anyway. Back your ass back. And stay away. For you didn't want this anyway. Heed this call. And the Lord says you'll be blessed. Pursue the nation of Israel. And you'll fail the test. For I will fight for them. And in the night you'll see my eyes. Hear me, China. For you are not who you think you are. Hear me, dragon eyes. For I will pull you down to the ground. Leave Israel alone.
I want to welcome you back to the 11th hour today. This is a, uh, this is a prophetic time. The song you heard, In the Wind, the prophetic time, uh, the wind is blowing again. And you know, you even heard, um, uh, we've been doing a lot with the wind. The Lord would have the wind play in the, for a long time now. And then you heard uh, the president's wife, uh, Melania, say, the winds of change have come. And so we're looking at the time of the wind. The time of the wind is the time when you win. The time of the wind is the time when righteousness wins. Hallelujah. You know, uh, I want to put that, that picture up now. And uh, I don't know if I'll be able to see it or not. But anyway, yes, and just be sure I'm not blocking it, and it's just uh, out. You know, I looked at that picture, and I, I see it. And that day this happened, you can come back to me now. That, the day this happened, uh, I was upstairs, and Robin came running upstairs, and she said, they've shot the president. And... When I went down and looked, and I, I saw, I saw the, the pain on his face when that bullet came through. And I'm watching, and when I saw that pain, I wept. I, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but it, it touched something so deep inside me. to what, I couldn't stand to see him in that kind of pain. Somebody who didn't have to do that. And yet he stepped out there for God to anoint him from heaven. And he stood all this time in the face of stolen elections and all this kind of stuff and criticism from everywhere his family beat on. And now this, and I watched the pain when it hit his face. I, I just wept. I wept. I'm talking about it now. I have composure about it now, but, but it touches me deep, and I, that's why I didn't show that. I, it's hard to look at it right now. But you see that look of victory that was on his face. And when he came up off that floor, show it one more time, John. When he came up off that floor and he got up, they were trying to keep him covered, keep him covered, keep him down, and he just wouldn't stop. I mean the power of God. Now, you're looking, at, you're looking at what would have pushed David. That's what a man after God's own heart, that's what would have, have done that. That's how David would have been, that resilient, because he had a call on his life. Now, people say, well, you know, I don't know, you know, if God, well, now don't you listen to something just a minute. To start with, the Democrat Party took God out of their platform. They did that way back. I mean, they just removed his name. They wouldn't even talk about him. And they just, and I remember when President Trump said, look out, look, you want to look at evil. I mean, they even took his name out. That should have told everybody all they needed to know. And then you start looking and, and President Trump held up a Bible I think it was his mother's Bible from the Hebrides Revival. You ought to look up the Hebrides Revival. And he said, this is what we'll go by. And when he said that, he became a target. And then the next time you see him, he's walking down in the middle of just chaos. And he stands and holds up a Bible. And then not too long ago, he holds up a God bless the USA Bible. Christians, oh, it's just photo ops. It's just photo ops. You know, you ought to shut your ignorant mouth. You don't even know what you're talking about. You're not looking at even the spiritual. I don't even know how we recognize. That's the problem. Now, if you think the world hadn't noticed that God's hand is involved, I want you to play that series of clips for me, guys, from the back. Play that. Just listen to a few of these as it's said. Now, when they, when they say providence, they're referring to God. 
And some of them just say it outright. But just, just watch this. Go ahead and play them if you've got them together. Well, first of all, I'm glad that we had a little bit of time. I was very emotional earlier. I'm not sure I could have done television because I've known Trump for about 30 years. So I'm watching a personal friend get shot in front of me. I mean, it was a very intimate moment for millions of Americans. And it was a providential moment. If, if he had turned to look at that big screen, and when he was turned, the bullet would have hit him here. When he turned back, it hit him here. That's how close he came to being killed. And I think we need to understand that, that this was providential, and he reacted appropriately. Presidential protective detail did a great job. The CAT team responded as it should. The counter sniper team took out the shooter. But again, I mean, this comes down to just, it's almost like the hand of providence intervened here. It's, mm. It sounded like the shooter was rushed to take his shot because people were on the ground yelling. Now, there's a report in the AP about a local police officer who encountered him on the roof, but when he pointed the, his rifle at the officer, the officer retreated. A little puff of wind here or there, the bullet goes slightly off trajectory. The, the president, the former president, happened to turn his head just as the shot was being taken and nicked him in the ear as opposed to hitting him full in the skull. I mean, we, we, we mourn for Corey Comparator, who was killed. We pray for the people who are in hospital recovering. But if it not had been for a couple of minor little things that happened, we could be talking about the assassination of a former president today. I don't think he'd want to stop doing them. You know, I, I think you see the response. Maybe he's do you He's want not going to stop, him? but I think, you know, we, we, we got to guard that perimeter a little bit better. I, you know, I came from a competitive shooting background. I mean, a 130-yard shot, it's like, it's like a two-foot putt. That's, not, that's nothing. It's, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it doesn't get easier than that. So that was truly divine intervention as far as I'm concerned. What was your reaction before you knew that he was okay? I've done a lot of shooting in my life. It's kind of my hobby, and you know, I know very, very well. And I heard those gunshots, and I knew it was bad. Uh, I knew it was bad. And obviously, when he would grab the side of his face, it's you know, you, you don't get those. You don't get slight grazes to the ear. I mean, that is divine intervention. He is the luckiest man in the face of the earth, Donald Trump is. It's impossible that he's alive today. Now we have the case dismissed by Judge Eileen Cannon. Don't forget the Supreme Court ruling for presidential immunity. It's like the heavens have opened up and President Trump is the beneficiary. I've always believed he's touched by God. I've always believed he's like a biblical character. Barbarians handpicked by God, flawed human characters picked by God to be our defenders and to keep us safe. Is there any doubt who's going to be the next president of the United States? Prayer works. This nation based on faith. Prayer works. Because he was sure as Donald Trump turned his head just slightly that the bullet missed him just enough to save his life to be the next president of the United States. We have believed for so long that God will make some changes in this country. And he's about to make a change in the current administration and send them home. You know, this is the greatest moment. This is the most important election of our time. And maybe of all time to date. Now why is this, you may ask? It's because of the plan of Satan. Did you notice that Trump was kind of all right? He, he was kind of, you know, all right until he started holding up the Bible saying, we'll just go by this. His whole political career has been involved in the spiritual from the time Kim Clement prophesied that he would be president. The whole spiritual world was on high alert then. The sinister plan of world domination began. This plan for world domination has never left Satan's mind. From the fall of when he was Lucifer, when he sang, he, he, when the, he sang the song of the man and turned it upon himself, and he sowed the seed of the serpent. He has continuously tried to bring it to pass. Satan understands something the church as a whole does not seem to. A large part of the church is very naive. 
They deal with the political on the surface, and the surface is where Satan wants the battle to be. He understands that the earth and all the natural world is made up of material, of material and spiritual. Uh, for example, our world is made up of atoms. And if we look at a simple hydrogen model, we see a nucleus and one electron that moves round and round. The ratio between the nucleus and the electrons in size is 10 to the fifth power or 100,000. The linear distance between the electron and the nucleus is 100,000. The ratio is 10 to, to the fifth. The area ratio is 10 to the tenth. The volume would be that number cubed. So what am I saying? It is more than there are the distance between them and the volume is more than there are seconds in 30 million years in ratio. Knowing this, then, a solid object has more empty space than solid space. You connect with the solid because your molecules connect with these molecules. But there's a lot more empty space there. You know, I mean, you don't need to go crazy and think, well, because they teach that we're, this is almost like a virtual digital simulation. But you don't need to go crazy with that and think, well, you know, this is not really real. Uh, but you, you take something and somebody hits you in the head, their molecules will connect with yours and you are hurt. But this is where metaphysical cults come in. Well, this is not really real. This is all really. No, I'm trying to tell you something. Satan knows the church don't know. But this is where metaphysical cults are born, Scientology and so forth. This is just to show you there's more to things than you know. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and do something with a little science here. And I remember when Chuck Misler taught this, or I was watching where he taught it. You know, there's a limit going forward. And he said, I'll call that the macrocosm, the large. You're going forward. The universe one of the biggest discoveries that we've made is the universe is finite. It's not infinite. It's expanding constantly, but there is an end to it from where it keeps expanding. But then if you turn the other way, he said, we'll call that the microcosm. In other words, you go smaller and smaller and smaller. And he gave this example where I guess science said this, that you could take a string and you cut the string in half then you cut that half in half and that half in half and you could conceptually keep going forever cutting that in half. But really there's a limit to that smallness. When it gets so small it loses a property called locality. It's now proven to be everywhere in the universe at once. The micro, microcosm has finite and the microcosm has limits. They say we live in a virtual simulated digital environment. Listen to this quote from a scientific, uh, scientific American on, in 2000, I think in five. It says, our universe is but a shadow of a larger reality. And of course, the Bible teaches this. Science is just now trying to catch up. What should run up your antennas is, is the next thing he said. He said, that larger reality, listen close, for lack of a better word, he said, I'll call it a metacosm. A metacosm. This is the area where angels reside. This is the region where they come in and out of our reality, is in that metacosm. Now, this is the world they understand. This is the world hierarchy understands. You say hierarchy, yes. You're dealing with four spirits. Well, you was talking about Donald Trump, and now you're talking about this. Well, I'm going to show you how it all works. 
There's four levels of spirits in Ephesians 6, starting from the lowest going to the highest. There's principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. Now, when you're dealing with these spirits, then up here in the heavenlies, you have people like the WEF, the WHO, you have CERN, you have all these people, you have the meta world, you have all these people dealing in these high realms. And this is what this is where those spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies operate, is up in that region. They operate in those levels. That's why you saw the WEF brought in that witch on their, on their stage and blew on everybody on the stage. And they weren't mocking her. They were falling out with it. They were going with it. She was breathing hell's consciousness onto them. And they showed it and they were proud of it. That spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. Then you come down to the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's the Greek word, the darkness of this world. It's actually describing to make something look one way when it's actually another way. Well, we just want to hear just, uh, we, don't, we don't want to hear, Brother Robin, about just, just this um, spiritual mixed with the political. We just want to hear, no, that's the problem is the nation was built on the scripture and yet the church has forgotten its power and forgotten what the nation stood on and we stood by from the 60s and let them start pulling it out from under us and when they did Satan made a way for his antichrist to have a door to enter in and high science knows this stuff they know there's a limit going forward and there's a limit going back they know this this is what they're trying to unlock is the metacosm where all the fallen uh, angels and angelic world moves and, and all of this happens. And there's a channel, a pathway. We call them portals that will bring them from that into this realm. And science knows this. That's why CERN does what it does. Why, why else would they mimic the ceremony of Pan coming up out of hell when they dedicated the Gothard Tunnel in Switzerland? Why would they do that? And then they, they simulated a pandemic and then it happened. Why is CERN full of actors when you go in and look at it and then you try to get down below where the portal is and you can't do that? And they never find what they're looking for, or at least they never tell. And why does Revelation chapter 9 coincide with all of that when it says a, a, a fallen being, an angel, a star fell, which is an angel, a fallen one, took a key, and was given a key, a revelation knowledge to unlock the bottomless pit. And out of it came all these swarms of demonic hordes with a captain over their host called Apollyon, and CERN is built on the temple of Apollo. All of these things and Shiva, the God of destruction and the cobras, all of these things are up here in the spiritual wickedness in high places. Then you drop down to the realm of illusion. And illusion is where, is where this whole plan takes place. Illusion of, of pandemics, illusion of of sickness, illusion, of anything that will give control to make you think something's one way when it's actually another way. There has to be rulers of the darkness of this world. Then you come down to the powers. Powers is where the political realm is. Now you're dealing with presidents and governors and all of these things, and you're dealing with, with politicians of all this is in that realm. And it's the last realm before it's handed to men. All the plan is handed to men by politicians. And they begin to come up with fake wars, fake uh, sicknesses, fake anything. That's in the realm of illusion. It's the realm of, of making you think something's one way when it's another. And this whole scheme is from Satan himself. And then it's handed to the people. Principalities take over from there. 
they take over from there. And so then you have princes over palities. And it's sold to the people. But you can't, you can't get a lot of people to see these things. But isn't it funny? Does it not strike you funny that the Bible is constantly, constantly talked about when Trump is concerned? Isn't it, does it strike you funny that he held, them, he held it up like three times? Does it not strike you as funny as when, when he was first anointed to be president? Did you notice this? He was anointed by a prophet for two terms. But then when it came time, again, they all gathered around him, these religious leaders, and some of them put oil on his head, and they did this. He had already been anointed by a prophet. They just didn't know it. But they were putting oil on his head, and they were boldly proclaiming and doing this and doing that, saying God wanted this and God wanted that and this and that. And as soon as it appeared in the rulers of the darkness of this world in the realm of illusion that he didn't get it where did they go they just left him they left him and they started trying to make each other apologize to save face with the world i don't try to save face with the world i really don't care what the world thinks about me but I do, I am concerned at what God says and thinks about me. So you, I just wanted you to understand that there's a limit going this way. There's a limit going to the smallness. And outside that, Chuck Missler called that the, uh, the metacosm. Well, that's where the angels fall. And isn't it amazing that Zuckerberg changed everything to meta? And it's all about virtual reality simulations somebody knows somewhere they know and now you start seeing it show up in in sunglasses and and talking about looking in the meta world you know I have a book called chapter 14 you might want to read that sometime you go on the website and find it this world of that metacosm is being tapped into. It's being tapped into. There are those in this world that are trying to tap into this metacosm and control it. You can see that when you saw all the movies show up about the fourth dimension and this and that. That's time going forward. The other's time going backward. This is the world they seek to dominate. This is the world that Satan will bring the seed of the serpent through. This is the world that was tapped when fall, the fallen angels came into this world, or at least influenced the create, and, and at least in, or at least influenced the creativity of man's minds to bring in a hybrid seed in the days of Noah. They tapped that world. This is the world that is understood by the highest of elites. You'll find the world of sorcery there, the occult there, and at the top of this chain, that's where it's at. Whoever that may be. Spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. This is the world of the WEF, the WHO, CERN, the occultic recreation of the ceremony of Pan when dedicating the Gothard Tunnel in Switzerland. <clears throat> you know names out of that world like Noah Harari. They call him the prophet. Klaus Schwab said, we're not going through crisis. We're, we're actually going through a transformation. And then the world of trans was entered into everybody's world. Trying to make people transfer to something else. This is why they had this witch coming on their stage, blowing on the people. And they weren't playing as a joke either. This